All right. I just want to thank Carly and the whole team for inviting me to speak today. I'm so honored to be here with all of you. Um, so I'm going to be talking a little bit about the healthy aging brain and things that I think we can all be doing right now to help promote brain health as we age. Um, so first, I'm just going to start with a definition of what is cognitive aging. I think we hear this term a lot. So these are real data that we have. We have cognition here on the the y-axis and age here and we see this sort of <clears throat> rapid gain of thinking abilities in development so um, starting at age you know three or younger that sort of peaks around age 30 and then has a, a mild but um, definitely measurable um, decline with increasing age and you can kind of find yourself on this blue line um, but you see you know if green is average um, you know normal aging typical aging doesn't cross too far away from the green line. And I just want to distinguish that from abnormal aging, um, which is when we become concerned about something like Alzheimer's disease or something pathological going on, which takes a much steeper trajectory and crosses over. If this red line here means impaired, abnormal aging crosses over this impaired line. And you can see typical aging does not cross over into the red line. Um, and so my area of interest is really at this intersection point between sort of typical and atypical aging. Um, and why is that? I think we hear sometimes, you know, if someone thinks, you know, if I'm going to get dementia, I'm going to get dementia. Um, but really, we're learning that this is not the case. Um, large epidemiological studies have shown that um, maybe up to a third of dementia cases are caused or attributable to modifiable risk factors, which I think is really exciting and something that we can be doing right now. So what are these factors? You know, how can we be promoting brain health with age? So I'm going to touch briefly on three of the factors that I think have the most um, sort of evidence behind them at this point and some that I'm the, the most interested in um, and some we have some data on. Um, but I also, and that's uh, exercise, cognitive stimulation and education, as well as diet and alcohol. And then um, I also want to give sort of a shout out to vascular disease. So these are diseases of the heart and the blood vessels. Um, so anything that affects your heart and your blood vessels, like smoking, high blood pressure, diabetes, or being overweight, I think we're learning more and more how connected the heart is to the brain. Um, so the heart really feeds the nutrients, the oxygen, the glucose uh, that are high energy brain organ needs. So anything that's going to affect your heart and your blood vessels is directly impacting your brain. And these are things that we can um, now treat. I think cardiovascular treatments have come a long way and I would encourage everyone here to think about their vascular health moving forward. Um, and two other areas that I think are very important, but I, I won't have quite enough time to talk about in this seven minute um, data blitz, <laughs> are uh, stress, uh, which we have some data on that suggests more stress actually activates your immune system as you age and could result in poor cognitive aging, and also social connectedness and social engagement, which I think some other folks will be touching a little bit on. All right, so first, exercise. Um, I think there's more and more evidence accumulating. Um, there's a recent review that came out looking at any type of um, trial of exercise and cognitive aging that demonstrated basically any type of exercise, as long as it's of moderate intensity, kind of a, a period, a chunk of time, 45 minutes or so, um, really any frequency across the week is beneficial for cognition, for your memory, your thinking speed, uh, your problem solving. Um, and I think we uh, sort of get this message since we were little kids, more exercise is better for us. But I want to really drive home the point here that it's not just exercise is good for your body, it's specifically good for your brain. So we see um, bigger volumes and memory structures in the, in the brain in people who exercise. Uh, there's a really nice study by Kirk Erickson. He had asked older folks to exercise or not. And the blue line here, this is a memory structure. Over a year of exercising, their memory structure actually got bigger over the year. Super exciting. Um, we also see that people who exercise have uh, better brain connections, so be better integrity in how the brain talks to, them, to uh, different parts of the brain. And these are actually data that you've contributed to us, so you can kind of see these are uh, sort of your brains up there. Uh, but we see people who report more exercise here have better connections of their brain across time. So the brain is more tightly wired and able to communicate to itself. 
Um, exercise is also associated with less inflammation and immune activation in the body, and that we're understanding more and more that um, immune activation in the body is related to um, immune activation in the brain, and that can be not so great for our brain and how it communicates. Um, and we've also learned from you, we have a group of you who participate in our healthy aging study who uh, either stay the same cognitively or get better over time. And we call you our super cognitive agers. And you folks seem to uh, report more levels of exercise. Um, so there may be something to this. So the other question we get a lot is, you know, what about brain training, these brain training programs? Um, so I'm just going to touch briefly on that. Um, I think there's been a w at least one really nice study of these brain training programs that we see. So these are these computer-based programs, kind of uh, like a video game. And this study um, looked at a thinking speed um, video game, and you can see the, that people who were in the thinking speed video game, they, did, they got a lot better on thinking speed. Um, but then they followed these people for 10 years and they found that even after 10 years of doing a couple of weeks, um, 10 years previously of the thinking games, that the people 10 years later were still better at thinking speed than the people who didn't get that brain training, brain training game. So perhaps there's some, um, some sort of gain um, that we're measuring here. And in fact, here, um, Adam Ghazali's lab has started to look at the biology of the video games and has shown that um, if the activity in the older adults might look something like this versus a younger adult where warmer colors means more activity, um, he asked older adults to do one of these brain training programs and found uh, that actually, yes, you can increase the activity in the older adult's brain to look more like that of a younger adult. So physiologically, there seems to be some changes in the brain that happens when we sort of mentally stimulate ourselves. Conversely, we have a, a collaborator, Christine Yaffe, who's published some work um, demonstrating that people who watch more TV, so three hours or more a day in their midlife, um, actually had much poorer cognitive outcomes 25 years later. So thinking about the, sort of being the couch potato. So uh, I think there's more to this brain training question really about challenge, challenging our brains. Um, I can talk a lot more about uh, where I think it's going and, and what's helpful for us moving forward. Um, but I think there's sort of hints here that there's uh, ways that we can work out our brain cognitively as well. Um, and just lastly, I want to touch on diet. It's another question we get a lot about. I think there are a lot of programs out there that people pay for, and I just want to emphasize that there's not a ton of data supporting these types of programs, and we're happy to give advice around these moving forward. Um, but I do think in terms of epidemiological work, again, sort of these really large cohorts of uh, folks, people have um, really looked at the Mediterranean diet, and so this was the diet that Dr. Bruce has mentioned a little bit, uh, Dr. Bruce Miller mentioned a little bit, so higher in um, legumes and olive oil, couple glasses of wine a night seems to be a good thing. Um, and m those who engage in more uh, adherence to a Mediterranean diet seem to have better cognitive outcomes as they age. So this is the Mediterranean py pyramid, um, which is basically suggests a little bit less red meat, more fish, legumes, um, leafy vegetables. But people have also just looked at fruits and vegetables, how many servings um, people eat of fruit, fruits and vegetables, and more servings of fruits and vegetables um, is associated with uh, better cognitive aging. About a 30% yeah. reduced risk of developing a cognitive decline or dementia syndrome, as well as a 30% uh, reduced risk of stroke. Um, so perhaps, again, good for the heart, good for the brain, um, but I think there's a lot more work that needs to be done here. Um, so I think the take-home message here is really um, a little bit of common sense, but you know, challenging your brain and support it with the nutrients that it needs. We have these brain connections that turn over every moment of every day. So even just sitting here, we're changing your brain connections. Um, in a week, 10% of your brain connections turn over, which is billions of connections in your brain. Um, and I think it's really exciting that we have the power to shape that as we move forward. Um, and just sort of uh, using that common sense uh, as you uh, age gracefully and help your brain. Um, and I just want to give a shout out to a couple of studies that um, I'm helping to lead here at the UCSF Memory and Aging Center. Um, you know, we're really trying to understand exercise in a little bit more detail. Um, so we're um, giving Fitbits to folks and we're trying to measure, really quantify how much exercise, what's the biology in the brain associated with exercise. Um, a really big study that um, uh, uh, Howie was mentioning is uh, the, the grant that I, I'm just getting up and running now is the Actin study, 
Um, and here we're going to actually have people participate in new um, activities and then we're going to measure what happens when people change their behaviors in the brain. So if you're interested, come on board. Um, we also have a collaboration with um, UC Berkeley and the Ali Institute to better understand when older adults go to um, a classroom and they learn something new, you know, how does their brain change? Um, and just, I want to take a moment to thank you, thank you all so much. Um, you know, I couldn't do the work that I do. I love what I do and it's all because of you. Um, so thank you and please continue to come back and ask us questions. <laughs>